Hi folks, this is all the fruit and here I have a patch with melons and water melons. Well, nothing special about that. I've eaten melons and water melons must be grown somewhere. The crazy thing is that I'm here in Heidelberg in Germany. In Germany, yeah, many people still have this old image conjured by the Romans 2000 years ago of Germany being one giant swampy forest with uh, naked giant hairy barbarians and constant rain and fog. Well, this image is not completely wrong. For example, back then behind those giant chimneys is the Odenwald, the wood of Odin, named after the, the uh, boss of the German gods, which is definitely kind of a uh, coldish and wettish place and yeah, large parts of Germany are still quite cold and wet but especially in the southwest of Germany there are actually areas which because of climate change have already attained kind of a sub-mediterranean climate and yeah because of climate change and the immigration of people from southern countries and changed gardening practices and new varieties you can nowadays actually cultivate a lot of quite exotic stuff in Germany and yeah here I am <laughs> at a it's a very strange situation basically there is a there is a road slash bike path here between the university dorms and a huge area with gardens and little farms and here without a fence or anything just with a, a little string surrounding it is something like a little garden or like a little vegetable patch it's really amazing i really hope people respect it and don't come here for stealing and look what they have they have tomatoes peppers a bit of parsley a cucumber plant all those are not that unusual for germany they've been grown here for a long time but the melons are actually nothing that common in Germany. Just a couple decades ago, most people would have said no need even to try growing melons in Germany because they will not survive the German climate. But nowadays, actually, a fashionable alcoholic drink of the city of Heidelberg, where I'm standing right now, is a melon brandy. Well, this can mean two things, that the climate has improved and that the climate has not improved enough, because traditionally in southern countries, like for example, I know this from Bulgaria, melon brandy is made from the melons which um, after rain um, inflate too much with rainwater and explode and then cannot be sold on the market, but have to be processed pretty fast. So basically producing a lot of melon brandy means that you don't actually have the climate for melons and here in Heidelberg since Heidelberg melons are not famous but Heidelberg melon brandy is famous it seems that well this brandy became famous years or decades ago so I, I guess it's yeah it's a two-edged it's a two-edged explanation it means that you can grow melons in Heidelberg but it also means that most of your harvest will just be trash only possible to use them for alcohol well anyway here this summer has not been that hot or dry so far but the plants are doing very well and let's check what they have here first they have some watermelon this is Citrullus lanatus and what does it say huh well, Gärtnerei Lenz, it's from a local nursery. That means it's probably some local variety, or at least some genotype tested here on the Heidelberg climate. But with watermelons, Germans, and basically everybody else don't, uh, doesn't care about varieties. Watermelon is watermelon. Okay, let's see about those other melons. What do we have here? Ah, okay. At least it says Chantere melon, yeah, from the same nursery, Gärtnerei Lenz. So I guess those will be those highly aromatic melons which are grown here in Heidelberg. 
and surrounding areas. They don't get perfectly sweet every summer, but they compensate it with a great flavor. Well, let's look at the plants again, because especially in Germany, you don't have the chance to see them very often. They are planted in on very rare occasions and basically never right next to the road and without a fence. Well, as you can see, they are very different plants. They are from the same family, Cucurbitaceae, but they are from two different genera, like the watermelon, Citrullus lanatus, is basically a closer relative of the cucumber, while the normal melon, or in this case the Chantere melon, um, Cucurbi... Um, uh, oh god, not Cucurbita... Um, oh god, now I forgot the name! It's incredible! Uh, I just forgot the name of the of the normal melon. Well, I'll I'll put it in the I'll put it in the name of the file. Yeah. So very different. The plants look very different, but they both produce big sweet fruit, and that's why they have similar names. Well, this melon, the Chantere melon, as I said, it's kind of a typical fruit of Heidelberg. Well, typical. It's a it's like a local specialty. This melon brandy. Um, yeah. So, people here in Heidelberg are used to growing them, but as I said, most of the years the melons are basically not sweet enough to be really tasty, but definitely sweet enough to be made into brandy. And since they are very aromatic, the brandy also gets very aromatic. And here the fruit are already quite big. We are in the middle of July, I guess in the middle of <coughs> August or so, or at the beginning of August, you will be able to harvest them. I really hope nobody comes along and just rips them off, because those people deserve to harvest their own melons. And most people who steal fruits, they would just steal them underripe. Yeah, so they have two big melons, basically one per plant. A lot of flowers, male and female flowers, but I don't know if, if those varieties are bred to produce only one fruit, or if... The gardeners have removed the other fruit, but yeah, just one per plant. That's very clever, because then all the nutrients and the sweetness will go into this one fruit. Here, a teeny tiny walnut-sized melon. Here one, well, the size of a giant walnut. What about the watermelon? Well, it's a little bit more difficult to find out how many plants there are. One, two, three, four plants. This one has a nice fist-sized melon. Here I see two on this plant, two smaller ones. On the next plant a teeny tiny fruit. Yeah, just a teeny tiny fruit, nothing else. Here another teeny tiny fruit. And nothing around here. This plant looks like it is the biggest. There is nothing here. I really hope nobody stole it because as I said, those people really deserve to harvest their own stuff. And, yeah, well, I guess the Chantere melons, you would be able to harvest them in a couple weeks. The watermelons, I would wait a little bit longer. The only one that even has the color of a ripe melon, of a ripe watermelon, is this one. But I guess it will have to grow a lot more. Let's hope those people will be able to harvest their own melons. Let's hope, well, I mean, 10,000 nice people can pass here. You just need one idiot to come here and uh, pick all the fruit or even, yeah, even that happens or even destroy this whole little garden. It would be so sad if somebody would destroy this little garden, but there are such people around here. You can never know. I really hope. I really hope this garden survives and I really hope those great people who planted that in the open so that everybody can see what those plants look like will be able to harvest their fruit. Well folks, this was a very unusual garden in Heidelberg. Growing melons and watermelons without a fence right on a, right on a busy bike path. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful city of Heidelberg. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.